Hi, welcome to another Razorback screencast. In this one, I think we'll just continue UV mapping the arm here. So, just like we did last time, let's start by selecting this arm and making sure that the geometry looks good before we apply our texture and UV map it. So I'm just going to copy the texture onto this new object and we can see it. it's got some UVs already, but most of them are not very useful. So, like we've been doing before, we can just delete the UV tag and start to figure out how, what sort of strategy we'd like to use when UV mapping this. So, I'm thinking we'll use a similar technique for the coupling here. Uh, it, it only makes sense that we use a similar technique um, for, the, for the part that essentially matches. So, let's start with the cylindrical mapping. And you can see right here that the coordinate system of this tag is still trained to the other cylinder. So we can just go here and zero out these values. And maybe we can zero out the position values as well. And it brings it to the same spot. So now we can rotate it 90 degrees. It lines up pretty well. And just like we did last time, let's find our seam and make sure that it's in a reasonable spot. So it's this green line down here. And I'm fine with it being on the inside, right around there. So once we've figured out the projection, we can figure out which polygons get mapped. So it looks like these polygons that are selected here, plus a fill selection, Of these right here. So we can just make sure that that's all that's selected. And tags, assign UV coordinates. So if we go to our texture view, switch the UV polygon mode, we can see here what we have. Now there does seem to be this extra polygon right here. And that's, let's see what that is. Well, it looks like there is a polygon face on the inside here still. Um, it's not something that we necessarily want, so we can just get rid of it. I can select this loop of polygons right here, and then we can use the fill selection again, just to select these few polygons on the inside. We can see in our texture view how they show up. And using our polygon tool, we can just hit delete. And so now we have just the polygons we want. And just like last time, we can use a variety of techniques to unfold this. I believe last time we ended up using rectangular selection like that. And another one on the other side. with pin to neighbors turned on. And I believe we just unfolded it using that method. So that way, when we go back to the perspective view, we see a very similar unfolding pattern. Good. So we can just move that out of the way since we're done with it. And now we have the rest of this object. Now, last time we had a cylindrical bit like this, but it was down here. And we have a similar bit over here, but we're gonna have to be a little more crafty UV mapping it. It's much taller, so we're probably going to want a combination of cylindrical mapping and a separate mapping for the cap. So, what I typically like to do when I encounter a situation like this is I think of the real world analog. What would it be like? What would it look like? I'm thinking that in the real world, this uh, part would probably have an extra cut right there. And it would be sort of a detachable cap. 
So when I encounter that sort of a situation, I sort of, I kind of just make it true. So I'm just going to make a few cuts right here. Five and all should be fine. And then in edge mode, I can select this one right here and just scale it down a little bit. And we get that indentation almost like there's a, like there's a separation of materials there. And right there, I've figured out where I'd like my cut to be. So I select this loop of polygons here, and then we can go to the fill selection. And then we have our first spot that we want to map, which is this cap. So we can go back to our tag and select flat mapping. Now notice that even though the mapping widget is all the way over here, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter even that it's off at an angle. It'll help if it, if it wasn't. You can still map it at any angle you want and then just let the relaxing take care of it. Let's try that just for discussion's sake. So I have the polygon selected. I have the mapping method I want. Now I can just say assign UV coordinates. Now we should see a skewed representation right here. But once we unfold it, once we relax it, it should be fine. So just like that, we can just say apply and it unwraps it nice and flat. So you don't need to be extremely accurate when doing this kind of mapping because Cinema will just figure it out for you a lot of the times. So that's good for the cap, sort of comes down onto the sides a little bit. Now we want to select just this cylindrical bit and map it. So the easiest way to do that would be to get down in here and see what I did. So it looks like I used a similar technique to create that seam, sort of a fake seam. So I can go to my loop selection and then get my fill selection so that I have this entire thing selected. But I can actually use my UV view to deselect the bit that we've already mapped because we don't want to remap that. It's perfect as it is. So now we have just the polygons we want selected and it's pretty obvious that we'll use a cylindrical map for this. So right here, this tag, we can just choose cylindrical. Go back to our interactive mode and just sort of drag it over here. Rotate it 90 degrees. Bring it back to zero. Maybe we can just zero it out. No, we cannot. We need to do this by hand. So one of the things that can help is to go to the UV view and see how it looks. If you're way off, you're going to find that it sort of snakes like an S-curve. So it's just not lined up there. But when we look at the UV, you see it sort of warps and snakes. But when you have it pretty much lined up, it won't give you that problem. I do see that we're off center because we have some compression here. So if we go from the top view, we can see we are indeed off center. So if we try to make it dead center, we can see it's sort of the same all the way around. And just like before, we'll choose the seam. So go to rotate mode and just put that green line where I want the seam to be. And then we have this cylindrical bit. So now we can go to tags and we just say assign UV coordinates and we have the cylindrical bit now. So just like we've been doing, we can select just the parts on the edge, relax those, do the same thing up here and relax those. It's a very subtle change up there, but it matters. So now we have this cylindrical bit mapped as well. Now we do notice that it's still sort of compressed around the cylinder and the reason for that is because we didn't do um, we didn't run the relax command on the entire shell which means it's actually still more squashed than it should be so if we run it on the entire shell it stretches it out but we do we do get a little bit of distortion which I don't like so what I tend to do is I'll just scale it up so it's like this, 
and then I'll use the non-uniform scale tool I believe I have a shortcut for that and we can sort of see that I can just make it so it's pretty much square and that's usually good enough for me I don't really need any more accuracy than that because it's it's just gonna be a roughly painted texture anyway so once we have these parts disconnected what we're left with is just the shell so the first thing we'll do is see where this seam runs because the seam might be in a perfectly opportune place so let's take a look at that so it looks like this is seamless all the way around here all the way around here around there the seam is right here where it goes from 0 to 1 so that's actually pretty good or is it 0 to 9 this texture starts at see starts at zero so between zero and nine is our seam which is right there yeah I don't think that's a bad spot for it at all so let's just leave it there so what we can do is something similar to what we did last time which is to select regions of the uh, shell and just relax those. So you can see right here there's a spot with some tension and that's probably where we should put a cut. So let's look at how that would work. If we select those polygons and then go back to the polygon tool, we can see where they are and we can sort of select the edges involved and we can cut them. So if those are the edges that are involved, you can just select those, come back to this view, select all the polygons we're interested in, and then make sure to check the cut selected edges. And then we just hit apply and it cuts it open like that. You see we may have cut too far, but that's that's not a huge concern because we can go to UV point mode, select these, and then go down to UV commands and we can say UV terrace and it'll stitch it back up for us. So once we're at this point we can just start relaxing different parts of it. You can uncheck cut selected edges and we can just start selecting parts of it that are important to us and relaxing those. and I like to do it in sections like you're seeing me here because it gives me a little bit more control over how aggressively the operations occur you can see here sometimes the the operations can cause pretty major changes like what's happening right now and we do see one strange thing this polygon instead of ending up over on this side it's still over here or rather these three polygons should be over on this side so if we were to move them they're now disconnected but what we can do is again using the UV points mode we can select these points and they're matching buddies right there and then we go to UV commands and say UV terrace and it stitches them together then we can go back to UV polygons select the polygons involved and just relax them so it gives us more of a uniform edge over on this side I mean if we're not concerned with all the distortion that's taking place this right here is good enough we can just select this shell and just go to the viewport to check it for any major distortion and it looks fine I mean the numbers don't look very distorted they look distorted where they should be but in general they look pretty uniform so we have this seam right here 
and we had a discussion last time about what if we wanted to move that seam to somewhere more convenient like maybe this row of polygons right I mean this this loop of edges right here so let's try doing that again so what we can do is we can select where we want our seam to occur right there and then we go back to this view and we check the cut selected edges hit apply and we get a second cut so this time our cut is over here instead of over here which means what we need to do now is move this back over here and stitch it back and so we can use the UV terrace tool again just like that and it stitches back and then of course we need to relax this stuff because we just changed the configuration so we can go back to relax UV and just apply it and even though the UV shell doesn't look very different what is a little bit different is that now the uh, the seam is appearing somewhere that we're prepared for we're prepared for a seam to be right here instead of all the way in front here where maybe we didn't want one now we do have a little bit of distortion here and it's really up to you to figure out if that's a big deal or not if it's a big deal that you have distortion there you probably need to relieve some of the tension by making another cut so the idea is that the more cuts you put in the geometry is the more relaxed everything is so for instance if we were to look at these polygons right here this general region and we make a cut there so we have our seam coming down here and then we can actually make our seam come around the front here as well turn on the cut selected edges what we can basically do is create more cuts that will allow the mesh to relax itself a little bit more so you see right here we've extended our cut one more edge so that it's a little bit more relaxed we can go ahead and say okay let's extend it even further two more edges and then we hit apply and it cuts it a little bit further but not perfect because now it sort of overlaps and overlapping UVs aren't good either even when we select more of the polygons it's no good so it looks like this is probably the furthest we should extend that cut otherwise things are going to start to overlap and so what we can do is go back here to our 3D view and we can see if some of that distortion has been alleviated and it looks like it has so we were able to map another one of these arms the last thing we would need to do is pack the shells so that they're all nice and uniform and luckily there's a command for that um, what we have to do is go to the optimal mapping and we just say realign and it realigns everything now just like last time you know we run into some issues where it looks like it's wasting a lot of space and if you see it doing that feel free to try to reconfigure things for instance if I were to put these two so that they're vertical and run the command again you see it uses the space much better and so now we have another part of the arm UV mapped. Now again, the final destination for these might be all on one sort of UV map. It might not be, so that's something else to consider. The configuration that we're doing right now, it doesn't have to be final. This is temporary. Now we do have some really intense distortion right here, so maybe we can look at that. That seems to be happening down here so it looks like it's just sort of tugging and maybe if we put a split right here down the center it'll alleviate that so let's select the polygons that are affected so we can find the region and then let's get the edge so I'm willing to cut 
right down like that. So if I select that edge and then I go back to relax UV and cut selected edges, it should tear it a little bit. But it looks like I didn't get the last edge. Um, looks like I need this one as well. That seems a little strange. I wonder if there's something going on here. Maybe I read that wrong. No, it looks like this final edge is not cut. Let's try this. Oh, you know why? It's because these polygons weren't selected. It looks like it'll only cut edges where there's adjacent polygons selected. So if I select all of these and run it again, you see it did cut the edge. But now we're running into this problem where it's, it's sort of overlapping on each other. And we don't want that either. So it's actually making me wonder if we need to split these into two shells. So let's take a look at what the consequences of doing that would be. Basically, it's asking us to, um, just let me get the right selection mode. It's asking us to run a cut all the way along here. And I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't see a problem running a cut all the way down there. It would create a seam that's pretty visible, but maybe we can deal with it. So right here, I will select the entire shell run the relax command and it splits it. So it looks like it's split all but the last spot. So we can just tear that off manually. So if we go to our live selection, we can sort of select all these bits. And then just tear it off. So we can relax that and relax this other side independently. And then we can ask it to pack the shells for us again. It's probably not the best that we could have gotten. Let's try moving these around a little bit again. There's actually an option where you can, you can have it rotate them if it needs to rotate them. Looks like that's turned on. And so here we can see there's still some distortion, but it's a lot better. If we, uh, if we rotate this so it's a little bit more upright, we'll be able to see our work in more of a uniform fashion. I'm just sort of manually shifting things around. It's okay to do that. So right here, we still have a lot of tension. I'm really not sure what's causing that. And it's one of those situations where you can say to yourself, okay, I must have this relaxed perfectly. Or you can just say to yourself, well, oh, so there's a little bit of tension there. Maybe if I paint some grunge and grime there, it's gonna look a little distorted, but that's okay. You can put a lot of time into getting the UV mapping perfect, but at the end of it, you have to ask yourself, is it really necessary for this particular part? And I think what we have here is good enough. So I know it's a little bit slow progress, but I just want to make sure we get all the mapping good. And I want to make sure it's, you know, worth something that we can actually learn something while we're doing it. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Hope you're getting some good UV mapping technique out of it. And until next time, see ya.